Hunting here. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make your own ERC20 token. So let's dive right in and get started, shall we? So the first thing you got to know about smart contracts is that they're actually uh, information that lives on the blockchain, right? So there are pieces of files or, or like, or literally a contract that lives on the blockchain, right? And these contracts might have different variables. For example, uh, variables are things that you can change. So that's why it's called a variable. And for example, one variable might be the balance of each user, right? So when you look on Etherscan, you don't actually, you know, when you own a token, it doesn't actually, it's not actually in your wallet. It's literally the contract has a record of how many tokens you have. So uh, in order to manipulate or change how much tokens you have, you need to use something called functions, right? These functions can allow you to modify these pieces of information. For example, you can modify someone else's balance. You can modify the name of the contract, the owner of the contract. You can also uh, have functions. For example, you can have functions that multiply someone's balance or deduct someone's balance or, or burns someone's uh, token balance, right? Obviously, uh, these functions have to be defined when you deploy it, right? So you can't add uh, functions after the contract is deployed. These functions will stay there forever. That's why uh, a lot of these DeFi projects, for example, Aave has done a token migration because the the, e, the ERC20 token that e, Aave was using on, on, for ETH Lend uh, can't be changed. So if they wanted to add more cool functions, they have to do a token migration. So so yeah, functions can, can't be deployed, can't be added once the contract is deployed, but the variables, so right from the balance, the name and the owner can be changed once uh, once the contract is deployed, right? So so let's dive right in. So what are the the variables and functions that an ERC20 token need to have needs to have, right? So you can go on ethereum.org and they actually have a token standard. And this token standard actually shows you the functions you need to have. So right here we can see you need to have a name function which is a view returns. What this means is it when I call this name function, it needs to return me a string it returns me a string is literally uh, you know n words right or number uh, or, or letters right so it returns the name when I call this uh, the symbol returns a string which is the symbol of the token it returns a decimal it returns the this returns total supply and if I call this it returns a un 256 which is a number it return if I call this function it will tell me how much token a user has an account has right this transfer function allows you to transfer uh, from one address uh, and uh, transfer to one address and the amount you want to transfer and it returns a boolean which tells me whether this uh, transfer function succeeded or not right and these are all the other methods like approve uh, the, the, the reason you see uh, the reason that you need to approve Uniswap to before you want to sell your token you need to call the press the approve button is because by default users can't uh, a, a smart contract or other people can't take your tokens right you need to be they need to be approved in order to spend your tokens and this is part of the ERC20 token standard to protect your balance right this approve functions only allow someone that has been authorized to spend the tokens for you right and here's the allowance which allows you to see how many uh, balance that you've approved someone to spend and and these events are things that is required for websites to interact with your contract so one contract that i really like a lot is the the boosted finance token so uh, if I go on a boost, right, right here and press boost, you can see this is the token tracker. This is not the smart contract. This token tra tracker just means that Etherscan is tracking all the transfers, right? This is not on the smart contract. Uh, this is just keeping a track of history. If I click on here, you should be able to view the source code, right? So this is the ERC20 token standard that Boosted Finance has implemented, right? So I press the copy. I can actually change this and deploy my own ERC20 token standard based on their format. But obviously you can use other ERC20 token uh, implementations, but I think the boosted finance token standard is pretty decent. So so how do we how do we write this code? So we can use something called an IDE, which allows you to change the source code and allows you to update stuff, right? So if I go here, right, and I and I press uh, a new token, for example, I want to call myself uh, cool token, right? I need to type. I need to make sure there's a dot at the bottom at the at, at the back, so it tells the IDE this is a a Solidity file, right? So an IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment, right? So you can edit code, you can deploy code, you can do everything 
on Ethereum blockchain just by using this 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 website. It's called remix.ethereum.org. Was made by the Ethereum Foundation, and yeah. So if I paste, you can see that it has all this code, right? I'm gonna very quickly run through what everything means, and in here you can see that this is running Solidity version 0.5.17, and an interface is just functions that your smart contract needs to have. Uh, and you can see that in order to abide by the ERC-20 token standard, I need to have all these methods, right? And uh, these uh, these other contracts is kind of like to protect your uh, your your methods, right? So this uh, this safe math is a, a library that protects your 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 ERC-20 token from any potential bugs that people might find by playing around with negative or uh, sending large amounts of money. These are very important things that you want to make sure your smart contract ha has. Otherwise, uh, you know, catastrophic things could happen, right? So the, the thing I want to draw your attention to is the bottom bit. This is the, the boosted token section, right? So in order to make my own ERC-20 token, I need to change some of the information here. So if I change myself, change this uh, this contract name to cool token, I can, you know, I can change the name and I can also call it cool token, cool 18, right? So the constructor is something that is called when you deploy this contract into the Ethereum blockchain. So uh, so like I said earlier, these are the variables. Uh, the address, this stores the governance, which is uh, an address. And this is a mapping, which is like a dictionary, which, sh which shows who is the minter, right? So you can see here, when I deploy this contract, the guy who deployed it is automatically set as the governance address and it adds the sender, which is the governance. So the equal side is uh, it's called an assignment, right? So I assign the sender as the governance. I add the sender, the governor, who's now, who's, uh, who, you know, who's the governance uh, to, to the minter, right? So you can see here, all these mint functions require the sender to be a minter, right? So these are like, the require statement is like a protection, right? So anyone that calls a mint function has to be uh, in the Minter dictionary, in the Minter uh, you know, phone book. And in order to add Minter, I need to be equal to the governance. So it ha they have to be the governance address, which in this case is the, the guy who deployed the contract, in order to add or remove Minter, right? And to burn, there is no require statement. So anyone can burn their own token, but you never want to do that, right? Why would you burn your own token? So now that that's done, uh, we can actually deploy this, right? So if you can, if you look here, you can see when I deploy this contract, it automatically mints the governance, which is the sender, 1E23. What does that mean? So on Ethereum, you can't actually represent decimal places. Uh, that's why uh, you have to tell the contract how many decimal places your, your, uh, your, your ERC-20 token has. And Etherscan will know, oh, okay, I will need to uh, shift shift the uh, the decimal places by 18 sp spaces. So if you click on a max total supply, you can see you know there's a bunch of uh, numbers at the back, and that is because there is 18 decimals, right? So it automatically shifts by that many decimal places. So if I go here, and if I want to, you know, change it from a hundred thousand, uh, you know, boost the finance token. Right now it's ninety eight thousand, but I think it's because they burned a few. To a one million, I can actually just add an extra e. But obviously, I need to check this mint function whether there are certain require statements that prevent me from minting more than a hundred thousand. So if I click on, if I search this mint function, right? Search, 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 search. Boom! Do you see that? So it calls this mint function right here, and it requires the the address you're minting to to not be a zero address a zero address is literally the zero x zero 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 the burn address that everyone sends their token to to destroy tokens right and then after if it so what happens is it goes to this line is it is it zero address if it's if it's not a zero address it will start executing this line it'll add that amount to the total supply right so it'll increase the total supply and then it will also check hey is the total is the amount you're trying to add greater than a hundred thousand and in this case uh, I'll need to change it to four because uh, I am minting one million tokens. And if this statement doesn't work, this whole smart contract 
will not be able to mint more mint any any tokens for me. So I need to do that, right? And then it automatically updates my balance at the end. This is this is a function called a map function, which allows you to uh, manipulate the the dictionary of balances, right? This is this is this variable right here. Uh, and yeah, so I should be able to deploy this. So how do you do this? So if I go over to this button right here, this allows me to compile this this smart contract and get it ready to be deployed on smart onto the blockchain. And if I press compile to cool token, green tick means it's compiled. And now I can deploy this onto the Robston uh, test network, right? First up, I need to make sure I'm on the Robston. Otherwise, I'll be, paying, I'll be paying a lot of gas to deploy this, right? So make sure you have some ether. Then uh, make sure the address is the uh, the address you have, you know, tokens in, tokens on, right? On ether on. Uh, and then you press the cool token. And then just press the deploy button. Um, and yeah, so everything on Ethereum costs money. So I got to pay some gas, right? I'm going to set it to 100 so it's a lot faster. But you probably don't need to put 100 GUI. Uh, but that is so it takes less time. So I can press confirm. And it should be ready for deployment. Right. So now you just got to wait. There we go. Transaction confirmed. Let me refresh this. There we go. Boom. So now I should be able to see my contract. I just need to wait for this to load. Uh, so it should also give me the. Uh, it should also give me the address. Wait. Let me. So if I search my address, I should be able to see my uh, deployment history. So if I go here, you can see contract creation, right? So the contract has been successfully deployed. This is the contract address. But in order to see all this information about my token, I need to share my source code with Etherscan. And to do that, you just need to go here and press verify and publish. First, you got to select the, comp the compiler type, which is single file, because this is just one file. Copy the entire source code. And then select 0.5.17. Uh, in order to see your compiler version, you just need to scroll to the top and check for that very number right here. And then this one doesn't really matter too much. No license. Paste the contract uh, source code. Do this captcha thing right here. And then verify and publish. And you should be able to see the total supply. Right. So if I go back to the contract right here. Cool token. Boom. One million cool tokens is now live on the Robson network. Uh, and you can actually start reading it, right? Remember I said there were a bunch of functions uh, that can be called? So the read contract means everything you do here is free of charge. Because reading is free on Ethereum. Only when you want to manipulate this these variables and call, use functions, call functions, and then manipulate these variables, do you need to pay for gas? That's a very important distinction. Reading the owner, checking who the owner is, checking the name, checking the balance, is completely free, right? Uh, so decimal, you can see the governance is me. There, You can also check, hey, is this guy, you can check, is this guy a minter, right? And then we'll say yes, true, right? Name, cool token, symbol, total supply. And that is it. This is how you make an ERC20 token. And if I want to check my balance or send people my token, I just need to copy the contract of my token and add it on MetaMask, right? I do custom token. Next. Boom. I have 1 million cool tokens. And I can start sending it to other people, right? I can send it to myself uh, or send it to somebody else, right? I just need to do this. Um, transfer between account. And I can select cool. And I can send, you know, I can send maybe, you know, I'll probably send 100, right? And then next, cool. And it should be, I should be sending it. Right, let me just check. Activity, oh, there we go. Now sent, I can view the transaction. So it has been included. Hmm.
there we go. See, I've just sent a hundred cool tokens to my other address. And that is how you make an ERC20 token in 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you in the next one.